I sat on my bed and I wept. I said, God, please hear the prayer in my tears. Welcome back to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution I want to take this opportunity to wish you guys a very happy merry blessed joyous new year so in today's video I'm going to be sharing a testimony with you guys I promise God on what I for now know to be the worst day of my life I was in tears and I promised God that Lord if you do this thing for me I promise you I will testify so that the world will know of your glory so that all glory can be returned to you and I just want to take this time to say God is good he is excellent he's marvelous he is more than what people say more than what our words can even express he is the ultimate all praise to the Most High God the one who was who is and is to come without further ado let me share my testimony well it's actually not I mean I guess it is mine because it's my family but it's actually the testimony of my parents which ultimately mercy to them is mercy to me in it so one and the same on the 12th of January 2021 both of my parents almost died both my parents were leaning into death's door and I have never been more afraid in my whole entire life so this is what happened earlier this year I found out that my dad tested positive for COVID and not only did he have COVID but he had COVID pneumonia he was the only one in the house that had COVID so my mom and my two younger brothers did not have COVID how I found out about this is I called my dad you know just as normal and he was like oh yeah I got tested for COVID you know but everything's good so if you know my dad you'll know that he's very lively very bubbly you know so when I called him he was his bubbly self and he was like yeah man there's a small little COVID for the babies you know what I'm saying like but we're gonna be right we're gonna be all right and as urban poet Kendrick Lamar says we're gonna be right we're gonna be all right next thing I know I am calling him and he's in the hospital and he's you know connected to oxygen and his lungs have suffered a lot of damage because of the COVID at this point I was so afraid because when I called him again he didn't have that same energy as last time he just looked tired you know when someone just looks defeated so in response to this I decided to start an emergency three-day fasting where I decided I'm going to pray for my dad and also my best friend had their parents have a huge health scare which I cannot go into detail about because it's not my business to share and another friend of mine my YouTube friend her mom tested positive for COVID as well and so with all these things in mind I decided you know what I'm going to fast to pray for their health it was also the beginning of the year and so I thought okay I'm going to pray for their health but I'm also gonna pray for the rest of the year to say God not only must you you know save these people spare them and heal them now but you know for the rest of the year protect us and also at the beginning of every year I make this prayer of you know God anyone who's a wolf in sheep's clothing or a Judas remove them so these were the general prayers that I was making so as I'm making these prayers and I'm in the middle of my fast I then find out that the rest of my family who was not positive before had tested positive for COVID. Now you can imagine how frightening this is. Because if you go on Twitter, you see people tweeting about how a whole family has died from COVID, you know? So this was also a scare for me because all of them have underlying health issues. I'm not gonna go into detail because again, it's not my business to put out there. So at this point, you start getting filled with these horrible thoughts and fears, but still I was hopeful, you know, I was not exactly drowning in worry or fear. Um, because you know I was strong and I was fasting and you know I'm just like God take the wheel and within a few days my dad is released from hospital this is great news right no way not this time so now my whole family is at home they're in quarantine they're all together they're in relatively good spirits you know but and at this point I'm calling them every single day now what I'm noticing when I'm calling them every day is my mom is being the caretaker she herself has COVID but she's being the caretaker feeding everyone cooking she's spring cleaning one thing about this woman guys she does not know how to sit still and every day I would call her and say you need to slow down you need to remember that even though you don't feel sick 
you are sick therefore you need to rest don't wait until you get super tired for you to get the rest you need and it became an ongoing joke when i would call her and see her in bed i would ask her were you really in bed or did you just run over there when you saw us calling and then lay down and say hi sissy i'm resting how are you so i would tease her with that every day so that's on one side on the other side my brothers you know they're doing fine but my one brother cannot taste but apart from that he's fine now let's go to my dad my dad looked better than before right but as the days go by and i'm calling he's getting weaker and weaker and weaker and i can see but of course when i'm asking him he's like we're going to be all right now let's fast forward to the 12th of jan i was having a very bad day because um the same friend who i was fasting for because their parent had a health issue remember i made that prayer where i told god every wolf in sheep's clothing expose them and remove them well god led me to the truth to find out that this person who was close to me pretty much one of my good friends was a wolf in sheep's clothing and i was really hurt about that so i was having a pretty sad day i was kind of down because i just found out and i was processing it now about an hour after finding out about my friend i get a call from my youngest brother Che, and Che's crying and i'm like Che, i'm thinking Che is just like fighting with bo and they're gonna say bo so annoying but no Che calls me and he's like sissy mom and dad are both in hospital and it's bad they're not doing well and at this point i'm like what so i try to console him and get him to calm down then i call my older brother and i'm like wagwan like what is going on and he's like dude i just found out and basically both my parents were admitted into hospital that day my mother had developed covid pneumonia and was doing really really bad like she was weak they had to connect it to a drip and everything and then there was my dad and then there was my dad now before i get to my dad let me just backtrack a bit remember i told you about the stubbornness of my mom where she refused to sit down and i told her don't let things get worse before you rest okay cool that's her stubbornness let's go to the stubbornness of my dad now my dad was deteriorating over the days and my mother was telling him go to the hospital let me take you let me take you and he was like no i don't want to go i'm fine and it took one of his close friends and a doctor and my mom to finally convince him to go to the hospital and let me tell you what happened when he got to the hospital now when he gets to the first hospital they can't help him there's no space and they have to transfer him to another hospital when he gets to the second hospital they told him that your lungs are functioning at less than 10 percent capacity and they were like i'm gonna be honest with you it's bad we're gonna do what we can for you but to be honest between today and tomorrow anything could happen essentially they were telling him you might want to start thinking about your affairs getting that in order because you may not live to see tomorrow you may not live to see the next couple of days that's how bad my dad was doing now i get this call and i find out what the doctors were saying and guys can i tell you i sat on my bed and I wept I cried with everything that I had in me my tears came from the deepest part you can imagine from my toes from my toes up all the way to the top and I just felt so weak and scared and overwhelmed and so I said okay let me pray when I was praying guys I was trying to pray but I, I was crying too much. I couldn't get the words out. Literally, I couldn't get the words out. What I did manage to get out, I was like, God, in Jewel 2.27, you said my people will not be put to shame. And I was like, God, please don't put me to shame. Don't put my family to shame. Please save us. And I was like, God, if you do this, I will testify. My parents will testify. I just need you to do what no man can do. I need you to do the impossible, God. I was really struggling to pray. So I sat there overcome by tears. I said, God, please hear the prayer in my tears and that which i cannot express with my mouth please hear it from my heart hear my prayer from my heart and from my tears and now the next day when i'm trying to call them remember it's also kind of tricky to reach them because obviously they're in hospital and stuff like that so they're not exactly readily answering the phone my brother didn't know too much and stuff but eventually when i but eventually when i did reach them i found out that my mother was discharged and she was doing much better and that she was sent home to recover and then when i called to find out about my dad it was 
bad the doctors actually said that listen if you did not come to the hospital tonight you would not have lived to see tomorrow another thing that made things hard as well is when i would speak to my dad over the days i called every day and spoke to him when i could reach him he was starting to like like some days he was preppy and cheerful but he was talking about like his life his story who he is and how we should take care of each other and stuff like that and that for me was so scary he was speaking like someone who's about to die he was speaking like someone who was giving his family the last words before he leaves you know so that was frightening me but I continue to pray and I don't know if you guys recall if you saw my community post but last year I did a seven day fast and I called people to join me so we still have that group on Instagram so I texted that group and I was like guys my family is they need your prayers I need you guys to pray for them it's bad I texted every single person who I know prays who I know is Christian and I was like listen I need you to pray for my family my church in South Africa was praying for my family they were fasting as well so we had a lot of people praying for us and I just really want to thank every single person who took time to pray for my family to pray for our health I really want to thank you because God answers prayers I'm telling you God says when two people or more agree on a thing it shall come to pass so I want to thank every single person every single person who prayed for us may my God bless you bless you beyond what you can imagine in jesus name amen anyway guys to cut the long story short both my parents have recovered when i tell you my parents are doing so much better they're functioning they're happy they're you know pretty much healthy compared to what they were before my brothers are fine to pretty much close off this video i want to go into some of the emotions that i felt in that time first of all when i go on twitter all you see guys the tweet that you see is guys my uncle died two days ago and now my aunt has joined him i was just seeing tweets of how husband and wife were dying following each other i was seeing tweets about how a whole family died pretty much on Twitter, all you're seeing is death, 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 all the time. There is no hope, basically, on Twitter. Everybody was just dying. So that really made things so much harder, where that's pretty much what I was seeing. But then I remembered, whose reports are you going to believe, you know? When I was being overcome by these feelings and the fear, I just prayed using Lamentations 337, which is, who is he that speaks and it come to pass when my God has not commanded it? And that was just me saying that it doesn't matter what the news are saying, what reality is saying, what COVID is saying, I am going to rely on your report. That's what I was praying about. And let me tell you guys, while I was trusting God and praying, fear does creep in those thoughts did creep in where it was like what if both my parents die I I'm in America right now they're in South Africa I won't even be able to go there for the funeral like my parents are gonna be buried and I'm not, I'm not even gonna be there and if my parents die what does that even mean like surely I have to leave school and go home and be a parent to my brothers and how are boy and child gonna deal they're babies they babies like they need their parents you know all these thoughts were just rushing in my mind and so i was dealing with fear and sadness the one lesson that i would say we have learned as a family is that money is nothing nothing is anything everything is vanity guys all is vanity in the times where we looked death in the eye money meant nothing nothing meant anything the only thing that mattered was god the only one who could help was god there was no amount of money we could pay there was nothing we could do that could save them except for god and i just really want to thank god money fails doctors fail medicine fails everything can fail you only god is your hope and your strength in these times love matters family matters god matters you know all the other stuff everything else is vanity and it is passing away anyway i'm gonna wrap this video up right here and i really just want to thank god like Yo, thank God. Honestly, guys, thank God. I want to share this testimony as well because I want to show that there is light, there is hope, and there is survival in COVID. Not every case is ending in death. Even the most dire of situations where you are looking death in the eye does not mean 
it is going to result in death and also lean onto your network of people that are praying lean onto your prayer warriors lean onto your church lean onto your prayerful friends and it just showed the importance of having a circle and a group of prayerful people of people who trust and believe in God because if I who would I have asked to pray if I didn't know these people if I didn't belong to a church which church was going to be praying for us and fasting for us as well it's important to have a circle of prayerful people of godly people of God loving God seeking God adoring God fearing people uh, in your life if you want to hear directly from my parents what their experience was like I'm going to link it below where they actually testify so if you want to go watch it it's gonna be in the description box below that's it for today guys I hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and I will be back with more videos Peace and love, guys.